It's Jerry McKinnon, running back, San Francisco 49ers, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Wednesday, September 23rd. You know it's going to be a great day when you can finally bust out a Jarek McKinnon <laughs> player intro for the fantasy footballers that when, when did that we has get to that? be that four was... years old. It feels like it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it must have been after he signed with San Francisco. It, yeah, it was but. the first year he signed with them, got to interview him in person. That was a that was a fun one. He was on the path to being a my guy, which is why I did the interview, and then that path was taken away due to injury. And he's back, baby. He's That's back. That's right. That interview is somewhere, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Somewhere. When somewhere. he said... Your boy's strong. Your boy's strong. Look, it's on the internet somewhere. Who knows? Welcome into the show. Heading into week three. Got a great quick question. Some buy, sell, some news, some trending or ending, a Thursday night preview. This is too much, Brooks. It's just too much. No way. We have to cut something. No. Okay. Oof. I guess we'll do it all. Those are strong orders <laughs> from the judge. From the judge. At <laughs> uh, the FF Ballers on Twitter. Quick question of the day actually came in from my nine-year-old son who has turned it up a notch uh, when it comes to his fantasy acumen in year number two. he was uh, I was walking through the house, and he, he said, Hey, Dad, hey, Dad, if you had all the information from week mm. one and week two before the draft, who's the number one pick in the draft? Mm. And I had to think about it a little bit. I well, feel like it's... Pretty easy, but it's a two. To me, it's, it's I know who a, it's a two is. horse race. Yeah, and I can't imagine picking someone other than one of these two players. So I don't know if it it differs from you, Mike. You know who yours is. So Andy, we'll we'll kick the question right back to you since we know ours. Who's your number one pick? Well, his answer, the nine year olds, was Aaron Jones. After because he's in. He's May look, in it makes sense. Makes sense. Uh, he's in for. I, I think Alvin Kamara. Uh, it's be, and this is with the information of Barkley's gone and McCaffrey's hurt right. for the next six weeks and, um, you know yeah I guess the answer could be Zeke based on him being healthy and the other two being out of the way but those I, are the two for me it has to be between Zeke and Alvin Kamara as much as Christian McCaffrey is great and would still be a first rounder you're missing you know if you were to draft from this point on I would not take him over Zeke who's been awesome yeah but he doesn't really give you those super ceiling games and Kamara who's just been truly super Camario uh, to start the season. And I think I would go Alvin Kamara. I would go for the ceiling. Yeah, well, first off, I mean, this is some unbelievable nepotism that has creeped into our show, allowing your my son, your to, son to steal our quick question of the day. I thought it was so good. I was <laughs> it, like, man, no, look, that's a it's tough a good question. question. This is what we do at this point. You've, you're two weeks in. You go, yeah. ah, what happened? Uh, I mean, it's, it's easily Alvin Kamara because as soon as – Michael Thomas went down. You're the, who's the biggest benefactor? You could play the game of which receiver is it going to be. Right now, it looks like Traquan Smith, but we all knew it's Alvin Kamara is the, is the answer. He's going to get checked down to far more frequently because he's going to take most of those Michael Thomas targets, throw in the fact that the first and second players off the board in drafts a, a month ago are now missing time. It, it easily becomes... Alvin Kamara to me. I would add in a dash of how Latavius Murray looks a little as sprinkle. well, which is bad. Uh, usually, really? Oh, man. He's, I didn't think he looked bad. Oh, I he he looks to me like he is definitely a step slow. Really? I, that's just my eyeballs. It, maybe it's because it's the one-two punch and you're comparing him to Kamara. Where it's it's not just like Camaro in looks general spry, it, yeah, it's healthy. Not, it's not just in general. You watch him and you say this guy's washed. It's just every time they give the ball to him, you go, oh, Camaro would have now gotten five more yards. We were a bit concerned about the regression, touchdown regression for Aaron Jones coming into the season. We were not 
putting him in that upper echelon. He sits as the number one fantasy running back through two weeks, which begs the question, are we disrespecting him again here, not even considering him in this question? I I don't believe so uh, because of the, the way that the points came. That is, that is not a sustainable model for fantasy football. Where, last year, you're saying? No, last week. You know, the, the way where he went off of uh, on the snaps that he got, on the opportunities that he received, he it, it he may have been disrespected in the draft process of when, you know, it, we got to the point of, is Aaron Jones really I feel like that's exactly really what 10? we said during the draft process, and <laughs> like, then you said it through two weeks. Hey, so if it's you, like, want to, you want to double down on it, then th- that's that's fine, but that's not the way I play the game. The, yeah, I mean, I, I would not d- draft Aaron Jones even third. He's been phenomenal. He is the guy. I don't think the touchdown regression uh, you know, that we were championing is all that scary right now. Obviously, you're feeling good about Aaron Jones a couple weeks in. I've got some shares of, of Aaron Jones, but – if you look at what he did last year, it's very similar, right? He had these monster weeks, but then he also, you know, really let you down. He wasn't consistent, and I think just how many weeks the, in a row do you need to to believe? I think if because we're two in, it, it, I think it's one. It's a matter of schedule as well. Um, Saints, Falcons, Tampa. So here you go. So if if he does it against the Saints, that's a good run D. If he's three for three, then then I would absolutely buy in because he's talented. He's great. I, I just question if the Packers offense is truly as great as we've seen or if it's, you know, they've they've had a little bit easier matchups to start the season. He Remember, had, last year he had nine games where he was not an RB1, more than half yeah, of his games. Yeah, oh, I remember. He's just had an impressive start, and he's he doesn't get the credit he deserves as being one of the top five in pass catching he is a dynamic wide receiver on the outside the routes that Rodgers throws to Aaron Jones are not the same type of routes that other receivers get he is downfield he is 50 50 balling right DBs or or I guess linebackers I I think he's better than Kamara but that's the comp like as a player if you were to put Aaron Jones on the New Orleans Saints I trust the Saints offense and Sean Payton and, and Drew Brees a little bit more as a player, he's fantastic. I just don't know if I could trust the Packers' offense. He so, had 26 opportunities, and he played on 48% of the offensive snaps. Like, that's a that's a number that's not going to happen. Okay. So you, you would go Alvin Kamara. I would. Jason, you'd go Zeke. No, I would go Alvin Kamara. It oh. was between those two, but I would go Kamara. Okay. Let's do some buy sell. Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, I saw a little glimmer in Jason's eye, and that was the glimmer of perfection. Last week in Buy Sell, he actually went three for three. It was a close one. We all sold Naeem Hines with 13 fantasy points. We all sold... uh, We, We should have sold one. (laughs) <laughs> One fantasy point. Yeah. Um, we sold Keenan Allen as a top 20 wide receiver. He ended up close, but he yeah, was the wide receiver there. 23. And and we all did that together. And then Mark Ingram, Mike and I sold him as a top 20 running back. Jason bought it. Oh, and I he finished, crushed it. He finished at RB19. <laughs> Snuck it in there with a... Well done. With a 30-yard touchdown but on fourth to and J- one. Jason said he was going to get in the end zone. That was the reason he took it. All right, buy or sell for week three. James Conner is a top 15 running back against Houston. Buy. I am definitely going to buy because I had James Conner in as my start of the week for, I'm guessing, one and a half seconds. I had him in the dock, and I was like, I'm not ro- I am not going to do this. I'm not going to put my start of the week on James Conner's health. But if I've got to buy or sell, here's where I can take him. I think he's healthy. He's clearly the guy. Benny Snell fumbled the ball and was was done. <laughs> Juju Smith. Say we, we we have an update <laughs> from the fantasy footballers inside source, which we are basing all of our acumen and projections upon. The sleeper bowl, the the celebrity league we are in with Juju. Juju Smith Schuster this morning dropped Benny Snell. He's out. So well, I'm yes. out on Benny Snell. No, no, too. no. You guys are you guys are mis uh, interpreting that data. Oh, are we? Yes. Please, please uh, enlighten us. Because I believe Juju signed Benny Snell after Week One, 
and we viewed that as a sign that was good for Benny Snow. Yes. What was the result of that intelligence? Negative fantasy points. Negative fantasy points. Therefore, ipso facto, him dropping Benny Snell. Benny oh, Snell's about to blow it up. We got an upside down situation? We got an upside down situation. Oh, man. You want to know what this this tells me, all jokes aside, is that you know I don't think Juju picked him up. He, he thought he would be a possible good pickup. And he's in there. <laughs> like they, I think we know a lot. And they don't know as much as we don't know sometimes. <laughs> I am going to sell. Top 15 is too high for me. I think he is in that 15 to 20 range. He'll put up the Ingram-like stat line, but I think that'll be outside the top 15, so I will sell it. Mike? I'm going to buy. Okay. David Johnson, same game. 10 fantasy points at Pittsburgh. Mm. That is not a difficult line to hit. He can do it in the passing game. I'm going to buy it. I will sell this line. I think that it will be... More difficult in the matchup. I mean, Pittsburgh right now, Saquon did not hit it in week one. 9.6. He, he was the under. Uh, and Melvin Gordon did. He had 15.4 points, but it took a really perfect uh, receiving touchdown. I'm, I'm just going to guess it doesn't go Houston's way this game. I Mike? Was, I'm going to sell. Man, oh, I, man. I, I've got a chance to really... You do? Yeah, you can Take pick up some points down. here. Adam Thielen is a top 10 wide receiver against Tennessee through uh. two weeks. He is the wide receiver 10. I'm going to sell it. And I will buy. Looks like we are going to be opposites here. Oh, um, my. I, I think, in general, most weeks, Adam Thielen is going to be a, a, a top 10 wide receiver. So, uh, the, the Tennessee defense is good, not great. They're, they don't scare me. Uh, oh, you know, what scares me is the Minnesota Vikings offense, and did, that is did, exactly why I'm selling. The Minnesota fair. football team is terrifying. <laughs> did they lose their handle? Yeah, they got rid. They, I'm, I'm just, I'm saying, I'm encapsulating all of them. There is not a good situation going on. They want to preserve the Vikings brand, so this year, <laughs> oh they're, no, they're going the Minnesota oh, football no. team. Oh no, top top ten. You got to. And I, gotta, this just I, in: breaking news. Uh, the Minnesota has dropped the front part of the name. They are just football team. Yes. They would not like to be associated. They have, they're now just going by dudes. <laughs> I really do wish this was top 12. Top 10 is... Yeah, I'm selling. That's oh. that's sketchy. Oh, I don't like my buy. I'll stick to it, but... <laughs> All right, that was Buy or Sell from Pristine Auction. Use the code BALLERS at pristineauction.com. You get a $10 credit towards your first sports memorabilia purchase. News and notes from around the league. All right, the New York football team, the Giants, they signed Devontae Freeman to a one-year contract worth up to $3 million. So uh, though <laughs> this is the word out from Devontae Freeman's agent. He passed up more money elsewhere because he did work out with the Eagles uh, for the opportunity in front of him in New York. Now, I thought he'd get more money than this. So this actually throws a little bit of shade on my view that Freeman will uh, walk in the door and take all the work from day one. I thought this deal would be 4 or $5 million, more guaranteed. Uh, he will practice with the team. He passed the COVID test, and he's going to practice and potentially play this week. But you're going to have Deion Lewis involved. You're going to have potentially Wayne Gallman involved. He is a hold on my bench right now. Yeah, if you have the opportunity to to hold, wait, and see, I think that's the preference. A lot of people that are picking up Devonta Freeman lost a running back or two and need to start him. I do expect that he'll come in and be the primary ball carrier week one. Uh, you know, if I had to say which one of these running backs from the Giants has the most fantasy points this week, I think we would all put it on Freeman. I, but we I would don't not. think we that would that's, not. Okay, we, we I would, would not. Pu I'd put it on Deion Lewis in week one. I think it's probably irrelevant. Uh, whoever it is, yeah. is someone I don't really want in my lineup. I and can I agree, agree with that. And I agree that I thought he was going to get five million. So up to three million was. This is not a situation where they're saying, "Save us. We're putting our hopes in you." Here's all the money. What's funny I, it, to me, you know, just trying to looking back at the history of what has happened with Freeman over the the course of this off season. We, we was he was reportedly offered like what four from Seattle correct you think so, think somebody has some regrets that he did not take that on a good team and now yeah I, I I get it 
for Freeman. You believe this is your best opportunity for touches. This is not your best opportunity to impress another NFL team that you have a job next year. See, I think it is. I, I think that's why he's doing it. I think he wants this job because I, that's why he's. I believe oh, that's why oh, he's doing it. I yes. see what you mean. You just mean the team. But I'm saying I watched Saquon Barkley right in Week One right have absolutely zero chance. It was like he, they were a JV team playing yeah. an NFL team. It was, yeah. There was nothing he could do. And if if the receiving work doesn't go to Freeman. It goes to Deion Lewis. Good luck, Freeman. I see what you're saying. Best of luck, man. Better 10 carries behind a good offensive line than 20 against the, behind a bad one. Exactly. Sterling Shepard on IR, turf toe. Mm. Hmm. That mm. stinks. Yeah. I think Evan Ingram will have a, a pretty good shot here. They're not going to be able to run like they, they expected to. They're certainly going to be down in a lot of games. Ingram, Slayton, Golden Tate. Golden Tate, a little sneaky snark. But we're, we're getting to the part of the schedule where it opens up for the Giants and Daniel Jones. We knew that the beginning was going to be rough. Soon, but not yet. Yes. It's That's, the yeah, 49ers. Soon. Although, this, the 49ers are pretty banged up. Their defense is rough right now. Devontae Adams is considered uncertain for week three against what the Saints. This? What is this? Why, what's this verbiage? It's a new injury uncertain. designation. Yeah, uncertain. I, I think this is just them saying – uh, we don't want we, we want to utilize the fact that he had a hamstring issue to say maybe you should plan if, for without him. If you're the Devontae Adams uh, manager, you need to pick up MBS yeah. and hold him as the last-minute pivot because it's a Sunday night football game. Yep, I agree. Dirk Cutter says he believes there's more to the Julio Jones hamstring injury than he led on. Mm, it's, like a trans, it's like a transformer. More than, <laughs> more than meets the eye. That's right. It's only it's just a, more of a Decepticon situation. Um, what do you think here? Russell Gage, Hayden Hurst, the beneficiaries of Julio has to sit? Russell Gage, I, I would say, would be the number one beneficiary. Obviously, Ridley's been awesome. and um, But, yeah, I, I think it, it would help, obviously, everyone else. Julio commands a lot of targets that would go to other players. Um, okay. Deontay Johnson, lingering toe injury. He's fine. All right, A.J. Brown, non-committal for week three. If he's in there, are you playing him because of this if he's in that situation? Yep. So good. I think if he's in, he plays. Agreed. Uh, I have A.J. Brown in our League of Record team. I've been following this news closely, listening to the wide receiver coach. I do not believe he plays this week. I think they're going to give him this week off. They're only playing a football team and <laughs> uh, have him heal up for the long stretch of the season. Your matchup with the football team <laughs> is when you have a chance to rest. Justin Herbert likely to start week three. Could be Tyrod. I've seen Tyrod projected by the majority of platforms right now, but uh, okay. We'll see. Does it change? Depending on who's starting, does it change whether you start Henry or Allen or Mike Williams? Uh, it, it, it changes the order of which players I prefer. I, I, I would put Keenan Allen – ahead if Justin Herbert is there. I would bump up Austin Eckler if Justin Herbert is the quarterback, but I don't I don't think it actually changes whether I would start a player or not. I'm not Like Mike Mike Williams it doesn't change if you'd be willing to flex him or not if it's Tyrod. Yeah, I, I guess I don't want to One start game him with with Herbert. Yeah. Before we move into the trending or ending segment, I want to thank today's sponsor Simply Safe, the Simply Safe Security this is what we have in the office here, keeping all of our goodies. Keeping Jason out after hours. Why won't you give me the code? I, it's too dangerous. Because Simply Safe is taking control of that. Simply Safe's got everything you need to protect your home with none of the drawbacks of traditional home security. You get an arsenal of sensors, you can get cameras, every room, window, door, tailored specifically for your home. Professional monitoring keeps watch day and night. They're ready to send out whoever, whatever emergency response you need. Police, fire, medical, Simply Safe has you covered. And all of this starts at $15 a month with no contract, no pushy salespeople, no hidden fees, no fine print. We have used Simply Safe forever. Like we said, we are safe from Jason at night. Yeah. Try Simply Safe <laughs> today at simplysafe.com slash footballers. You get free shipping. 
a 60-day risk-free trial. There's nothing to lose. That is simplysafe.com slash footballers. We also encourage, encourage you to check out jointhefoot.com, our fantasy football community. Become a, a part of that uh, incredible group of human beings. Um, this is insane. Adam Schefter just tweeted this. Tyrod Taylor. No The way. Chargers team doctor accidentally punctured his lung before kickoff. Holy crap. While trying to administer a pain-killing injection to Bro, the Bro, what? That's not okay. Well, certainly not, Mike. I'm just saying, like... Oh. I don't think he did it on purpose. Well, he, I get that. But Nor will he have the opportunity to do it again. That's what's yeah, like, that's the, the repercussions for this are massive. If that is... Oh, man. You got to feel terrible for Tyrod Taylor. Yes. That... We thought this, I mean, to be honest, the first impression, Tyrod's been every, through this before. Every every everybody. single person thought, oh, wink, wink, injury. Right. They're moving on to the rookie, and this was it. And I mean, Tyrod had his lung puncture. My my first thought was, I'll bet Herbert took first team reps this week, and they knew all along. And yeah. They didn't want to say who their starting quarterback was. And then, no, this is just a terrible real-life situation. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> Hope you feel better, Tyrod. Yeah. Very soon. All right. Let's... Uh, I thought it'd be nice to do some trending or ending today. We've got two weeks of the NFL season. That's enough to draw all conclusions, right? Let's, of course. Let's do it. Trending or ending. <laughs> all right. So we're going to walk through some good and some bad in terms of trending or ending. You guys make your predictions. Let's start with T.Y. Hilton. Through two weeks... The T.Y. Hilton plus Phillip Rivers, it's not been good. No. He was the wide receiver 50 in week one. He was the wide receiver 93 in week two. He dropped a 50-yard touchdown pass that we all watched right before the show today. It's more like a Motel 6 oh. experience than a Hilton. Oh, okay. Am I right? Yeah. Nope, you're right. Look, you got to bust out the hotel jokes. Yep, you whenever do. Whenever you got a chance. You don't get a lot of them, but that was a good one. All right. Week three, week four, New York. Chicago timing seems a little off rivers threw an interception his way he dropped the touchdown I saw another drop I, you know watching every one of his plays this year I think it's an ending situation that's how I'm gonna weigh in and not that is not the same as saying T.Y. Hilton is going to be a top 12 wide receiver I don't believe he will be just with the what Philip Rivers is now but I think Hilton is better than these numbers the opportunities were there if he catches that touchdown pass, everything changes. That's mm -hmm. a 50-yard touchdown pass. All of a sudden, he's a top 24 wide receiver. So I'll go with ending. I'm also going to take the ending. The While well, we're only two weeks in, so the data is very limited. And with the Colts, you basically have to throw out week two against the Vikings what happened. You saw only five targets for T.Y. Hilton, and he was in on 58% of snaps. The, the, this game was over before it really started. And I'm looking more to week one. They played Jacksonville. He had the nine targets, was in on 90% of the snaps. Didn't get the, the output that you were hoping for. But this is, uh, if I have to call for one, I'm going to say ending. And I think that T.Y. Hilton will bounce back and still be a very, uh, like a very solid top uh, top 24 would you type go, of a guy. Would you go try to acquire him? Yes, I would try and trade okay. for him. Yeah, I, I do think he's a, a good buy low candidate. I see him as my preseason ranking was, which was, was low for T.Y. Hilton. For, yeah. you know, oh, he's been this top 15 wide receiver. I had him in the lower 20s. Um, I think he was a back-end wide receiver two or a, a high-end wide receiver three. I still believe that's what he is. Not an elite player, but not what we've seen these first two weeks. He will be much better than that uh, over the course of the season. And, yeah, I mean, right now, T.Y. Hilton managers have to be looking to offer right. they're, they're going through waivers going oh man do I do I drop him if they didn't watch the game if they didn't see the 50 yard touchdown that was dropped right in his lap and whoops so yeah I, I would I would acquire him and I think he'll be better so I unanimously agree this one is going to end he will not be as bad as he's been I had Will Fuller and T.Y. Hilton as my starters in uh, our dynasty league and that mm -hmm. was a Suboptimal situation. <laughs> Mike and I this last week had in two different leagues 
the stellar combo of yeah. Julio Jones and Devontae Adams. Oh, my no, goodness. no, it was the trilogy because Allen Robinson was also in there. Oh, my. Yeah, oh that's my. right. <laughs> Let me ask you this before we move on to another player here in trending or ending. Would you rather have A.J. Green or T.Y. Hilton rest of season? Oh, that's a fantastic question. I would take the chance on – I take the chance on that AJ Green volume. It's been absolutely outrageous. They just haven't connected. And Did you know, Jason, that AJ Green is number one in the NFL in air yards through two weeks? Well, I believe it, but the air yards are extra. Like when you go and you look at his air yards, he gets like five extra air because yards. Because the overthrows? <laughs> yes. Um, I'm still going to take the better quarterback here, though, so I'll take AJ Green. Oh, AJ Green is my answer Any as well. Any chance to take a shot at P River, I'll do it. <laughs> yes, you will. And uh, he kind of deserves it right now. So let's go to another player here, Josh Allen. Oh, the stallion. Excellent. Yes, he has been the quarterback three both weeks. Both weeks he's been the quarterback three. Now it's it's the Jets and Miami, a very nice start to the year. This is why Josh Allen was on the short list for uh, all of our fantasy drafts because we knew mm -hmm. you want to get off to a hot start. We didn't know it would be this hot. but well, and You didn't know it would be 300 passing yards, 400 passing yards. That's not what you were drafting, Well, I Alan. knew, Mike. I am. Well, if you knew it was going to jump up to that level, I should have told somebody. You should have shared that information. <laughs> no, I didn't know he was going to do what he's done. But Stephon Diggs, that – if you're looking at trending or ending, Stephon Diggs is one of the reasons why you could buy into trending because you have a – it's more than an anomaly, right? He's had big games before, although last year he really struggled to give you the big-time weeks. Two years ago as a rookie, the big weeks came because of the rushing yardage. Last year, he was a much more solid quarterback, but not premier type of fantasy finishes. This year, you start the year with two weak-winning type of performances – and you have the foundational piece of Stephon Diggs trending or ending as uh, – what What does this mean? A top three quarterback rest of season? That's a tough ask Let's for me to – Let's say top five. Top five, I think, I think I would go with trending. I think top five is very reasonable. He has a rushing baseline. He has yet to get, you know, those rushing touchdowns. Um, he has, I think he has one in yeah, two games. One. So – but he's no Cam Newton with four so far, or whatever it is. Right. Uh, I'm going to go trending as top five. I don't see how. I mean, I, I could be fooled here, uh, but I, I couldn't see any way to say ending because he has the tool sets, the weapons, the team is wanting and giving him the opportunity. If crap hits the fan, then he runs the ball, which is even better for fantasy. Uh, I, I think he dominates the rest of the season. Yeah, I believe uh, looking back to you know, – I was not on, not in on Diggs. Thought he Diggs overperformed last year as like the the best deep ball wide receiver. But uh, looking back, you're like I think I underestimated the mobility of Josh Allen combining that into the deep threat of Stephon Diggs. Where Kirk Cousins, if a play blows up because his offensive line can't handle the can't handle the blocking, Josh Allen can scramble out of some stuff and then find Stephon Diggs deep. I, I will say this. <clears throat> the schedule gets really difficult for, for Josh Allen at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. Let me read you weeks 13 through 16. At San Francisco, home against Pittsburgh, mm. at Denver, at New England to end the year. Yeah. You're going to, you know. I wouldn't worry about it right now, but. No. But, uh, yeah, that that's, sounds yeah. unfortunate. And by the time we get there, he could be dominating so much that you're just going to play him through this, mm -hmm. which we'll find out if that's a mistake or not. Because the, the, the opposite to try and balance the, the Josh Allen love fest that's happening here, last year when he was expected, you're like, oh, Josh Allen's going to have a monster fantasy game. He would. And then when you saw him up against a tougher defense, you go, I don't know if I want to play Josh Allen. You would get that like number ten on the week output, that, that not this huge ceiling that we're ceiling. Ceiling, ceiling that we're ceiling. That we're ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> Hooked on the ceiling. Yeah. Cooper Cup trending or ending? He's been outside the top twenty-four for two consecutive weeks. It's concerning. Uh, he is the wide receiver forty-two through two weeks. Started as uh, week one, he was the wide receiver 60 last week. He had 10.5 fantasy points, but that put him at 33. It's five for eight. I mean, he has not gotten into the end zone. He had 100 total yards. <clears throat> yeah, he did. 
which kind of shocks me that that equated to wide receiver 33 last week. I was a bit surprised having right. seen this. But uh, 86% of snaps. He played 85% of snaps, so he's been on the field. Has Buffalo, the Giants, Washington. I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts. Uh, yeah, I, I want to I hear Mike's <laughs> thoughts first because I know that there was so much talk on this show leading up to the season about the last five games of the Los Angeles Rams, the way that they were using Tyler Higbee, the way that they were using Cooper Cup less. And, Mike, you were on board of pro Higbee worried about Cooper Cup. So far, two weeks in, your stance – is looking strong, but do you still buy into that from what you've seen on the field? I will say that I believe that I would say ending because I believe that Cooper Cup is better than this. The problem that where when I was going through the process of projecting Cooper Cup was he has a legitimate touchdown, uh, not threat is the wrong word, competition. Like before, when you got in the red zone, it was Cooper Cup. You just that's. That, this is what's happening. The defense knows this is what's happening, and no one can stop it. Cooper Cup is just a touchdown monster. But now there is there is Hig Beast, who is there as well, that can scoop up the the, the touchdowns. Like Higby or all three of them, or, like a selfish it, jerk. <laughs> exactly, but Higby wasn't – his volume wasn't insane last week. I think he had five he had, or six he targets. He didn't have much yardage, did he? No, no. He, but he pulled in the touchdowns. So yeah. that, is, that is the difference is that the touchdown – can go somewhere else now. So that is you have to build that into the variance of Cooper Cup. Five for eighty one. That's that's no shameful game by any stretch. So I would say Thanks, ending Mike. <laughs> you're welcome. But uh and, and upcoming up, you know, the Buff Buffalo matchup, they've been giving up yardage to the slot uh position and so I, I think that Cooper Cup can have a bounce back week. It's it's easy to say ending based on the first two weeks. But um, everything you said is true. Everything you said is is accurate. And there is – he's been a player that needs to score. I mean, he was a double-digit touch, – one of the few double-digit touchdown players last season. That is kind of one of the linchpins of Cooper Cup is he needs – you know, he's had some big touchdown plays. Both Cooper Cup and Robert Woods did not have, you know, huge weeks last week. Um, and it used to be you could count on it. You can't – touchdowns go back and forth. You You never really know – who's going to be – they're going to keep their touchdown totals or lose them. But there are a handful of players, you know, like Devontae Adams. I'm I'm banking on the touchdowns coming. Calvin Ridley. Calvin, Cooper Cup was one of those guys, but you saw such a, a shift at the end of last year that it, there was reason for concern. Well, let me, let me ask you this. Highest snap percentage of his career this, this year so far, so, which is kind of see, in, that, incredible. That's why you got to say ending if he's on the field. Now, T.Y. Hilton, we know if, if you were to target him in a trade, he's going to cost you nothing, or he, he could cost you nothing right. because he's been – outright terrible uh, this last week 100 total yards for Cooper Cup would you target him because you guys are saying that you think there's a bounce back or are you worried enough where it's like I don't want to I don't want to pay for Cooper Cup in case you know his touchdowns in the season at five I know I don't want to trade like a, a a known fantasy football like uh, someone who's really contributing to my team and I know I can rely on them at, for the possible upside of what Cooper Cup has been in previous years, but I would be real happy to go to the manager of Cooper Cup with some with the fancy new waiver wire addition, who's someone who's been crushing, and be like, "Hey, you interested?" And l let's make this trade. All right, let's go to Calvin Ridley, trending or ending as a top five wide receiver. He was number two in week one, number one in week two. Twelve targets, ten targets. 16 catches on the year, 239 yards, four total touchdowns, second most air yards in football. We already know uh, baked into Atlanta is Matt Ryan and 300, 400-yard games. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, a top five wide receiver? Yeah, I'm going to take him. I'm going to take it too. I, this is trending. Calvin Ridley is. It's tough uh, when the touchdowns have been at two a week. Yeah, he will not get two touchdowns a week, but what we know is that it, in his shorter career, Calvin Ridley catches touchdowns. He Double-digit touchdowns as a rookie, if I'm rem remembering that correctly. Calvin Ridley, I, I, we, we don't want to say it, but I'll just say it. Calvin Ridley is 
what you want Julio Jones to be. Oh, mercy. I totally get what you're I saying. I feel like that's the kind of thing that Julio hears and then drops 39 oh, targets, 27 receptions, Julio Jones 650 is, yards. I, I, this, this is not saying Julio Jones isn't still a top 10 wide receiver. I'm saying Calvin Ridley gets the air yards, gets the targets that Julio does. But then some he has the connection in the end zone with Matt Ryan. I'm bitter. Okay. I'm I, bitter because I, I went and I tried very hard to get Calvin Ridley before this season. And that would have just been So now been, you're calling for a pox? No, I'm not. <laughs> a plague on your house. I didn't say it was ending. I just said it's hard because of the touchdown totals. Top five is a, right. it's a high bar. Here's an exercise we can play to uh to figure out where we would put him. Would you rather have DeAndre Hopkins or Calvin Ridley? I'd rather have DeAndre Hopkins. I would as well. There's one. Okay. Monte Adams. Oh, I'd have Adams. I would Adams. rather have Adams. Here's an interesting name. Michael Thomas. Calvin Ridley. I'd take Michael Thomas. So oh, Easily. So you he might would, play this week. You would take Calvin Ridley and trade him for Michael Thomas? Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Um and Mike, would you I'll, take Michael Thomas and trade him for Calvin Ridley? I would. Okay, I'm, I, I get it. He, maybe he plays this week. You're going to be able to get a lot more than Calvin Ridley. All than right, Michael Thomas, Tyree Kill, uh, Calvin Ridley. Um, we're three in, and we're already having Tyree Kill hesitation. Okay, yeah, I'm not. I'm not. Here's there the yet. most fun one, obviously, Julio Jones. Yeah, I knew. I knew that one was coming. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's... I'm sticking with Julio Jones. Oh, oh. gosh. Are yeah, you? I am. I am. It's two weeks in. And it's is two Decepticon weeks in. hamstring? Uh, so that that's means, a strong point, Mike. That means that, um, Andy, I believe that's five players. So that puts Calvin Ridley at least at six. I He's, don't think he finishes as a top five wide receiver. Oh, I, I guess that's he, what I just I just decided. I think because of the fact that he's got four touchdowns in two weeks, he probably will. The same way that Michael Thomas won't finish as a top five wide receiver on the season. Um, but from this point out – from here on out, you're saying you don't believe that he will be a top five wide receiver. Yeah, okay. yeah, it's, and and I, you know, I feel like I'm in the minority here, and it, it, I'm getting I'm getting piled up on. But here's what Michael Thomas doesn't have to deal with: Julio Jones, sure, on the other side of the field. And we're two weeks in; we have 14 weeks left. Michael Thomas, let's say he misses this week. Michael Thomas for the remainder of the of the year, with what we saw. Drew Brees needing? No, I get. I it. would take Michael Thomas rest of the season over Calvin Ridley. The 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 concern I'd for water me bet it on. Uh, put it on the board then. Okay. The go ahead. Thank you. Water bet. The concern for Michael Thomas from my side is not Michael Thomas. It's sure he plays this week. He had a high ankle sprain. I, I've I've seen that song and dance enough that that the the probability of him needing multiple weeks to really return to being Michael Thomas. Can't he backpedal to his average depth of target, Mike, <laughs> where, where Michael Thomas is? Does he need this, his ankles at all? Yeah, I don't know. Okay, well, that's a fun water bet. That's not one of those Derek Carr, Mitch Trubisky water bets. Well, and obviously – This is a Calvin Ridley, Michael Thomas water yeah, bet. Yeah, and, and baked into this is the unknown – Injury timeline. So I guess in your hope and Michael Thomas gets back quick. The, the injury timeline. Yeah, that was a that was that part's unfortunate in the bet, but I I, I like it. The, the you want to do points per game? Uh, <laughs> look, the, the bet already happened. Okay. <laughs> That's a you, nice attempt. I just Andy. thought I, maybe Mike would go spirit of I, the I spirit really of the bet. You can't go up to the bookie and be like, "Look, I know we well, already we already made this I, bet." But, I think uh, that is the spirit of the bet, though, is total points, not points per game. Because if Michael Thomas was healthy. And active right now. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's the trade. It, the trade right now has his injury baked in, so yeah. that's fine. Thanks, and thanks, Jason. I hate you. You're welcome. And it's the the other another piece of it to me is the Saints defense is solid. The, the Falcons defense are going to allow lots of points to everybody. I'm just going to remind people if they are piling onto me at home. Chris Godwin started the year last year mm -hmm. on just massive fire, and yes, he. He'd he did, and where did he finish? Yeah, I know, I know, but but the point <laughs> from that point on, there were a lot of players that you would have wanted, right. other than Chris Godwin over the back half of the year. So maybe I maybe this would be like the Russell Wilson bet, where it could be. you're right, but yet from this point on, Michael Thomas may average more 
but Ridley really might finish ahead I, of him. I'm, I'm glad you brought up uh, Godwin. Godwin, because that that is a I mean, it's a comp that's been made all off season and now makes uh, a lot of sense in season. He finished as the wide receiver too. He was phenomenal in the beginning of the year, but the second half of the year, Chris Godwin was the wide receiver twenty two. Do you hear that? So it, it, it's, 22. Yeah. It, and where did he finish on the year? Like wide two? receiver two. This is why I said he'll he, probably end up. He's there. going to finish okay. as a wide receiver five. And then Matt Ryan, much better, much more consistent quarterback than Jameis Winston. And he likes throwing into Julio though, man. In between. And the Chris Godwin. I know. And that's enough. Chris. You Godwin, mean uh, Calvin, Calvin, Ridley. Or Calvin Ridley. Yeah. All right. I got something for you. Breaking news. Two bits of news. One, Christian McCaffrey has been put on short term IR. He is out at least the next three weeks. So those that speculated he would try to get back early, he could still try because four to six weeks is, you know. I think this is for the best for for fantasy football knowledge. You know McCaffrey's out three weeks. Davis there, is going to be the guy for three weeks. There is nothing more infuriating than a guy who you know isn't playing, who's listed as questionable or doubtful, and you can't place – in your IR and make a waiver transaction. I can't stand that. So this is actually, I, was, I agree, great news because now you know what to do and you're not going to have to play that that roster uh, spot game. Yeah, and you didn't want the injured CMC being started and mm -hmm. dealing with that. Uh, I will say this. Two minutes ago, our waivers went through. Oh. And I was going to about, I was about to ask you, does that news make you raise your bid on Mike Davis? Of course, you can't now. Nor did you get him. Well, I knew I would not. I told you yesterday I'm not going to bid. He went for 42-fat. I, I, I yep. wasn't going to bid enough um, to get him. I, I was willing to go up to 30, but not higher than that. I was the Christian McCaffrey manager, so this was, you know, do I make a hard play? And I'm just not willing to spend, you know, nearly half of my fab on a temporary guy who, you know, Mike Davis, he's not a he's You not should great. have seen Jason – doing waiver tilt yesterday in the studio <laughs> oh it was because we were i mean first uh, he went first he, he petitioned to be paid for the work because he said it was such hard work <laughs> paid by who i don't know but just like <laughs> it was a like job, a man it was like a job to go through all the because yesterday was a big waiver show mm -hmm. but there was still this point like i told jason i got to the point where i'm putting waiver claims in and i was lucky enough not to have an injury jason had cmc hurt i didn't have a major injury and we got to this point where it was like, I kind of want these players, but if I'm not going to play them mm -hmm. this week, how much are you going to spend on a uh, Mike Davis or a Daryl Henderson? So I didn't really invest a lot. I, I spent seven fab on uh, Nikhil Harry to, to put him back on my roster, which was the same bid as somebody else, so I ended up getting him. But otherwise, I didn't put heavy bids in. Yeah, I mean, a, a perfect example here. I, I have Tony Pollard right now. Um, on my team, and it was do if I'm not playing Mike Davis, which in 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 my roster right now I wouldn't be. Would I rather have Mike Davis or Tony Pollard? And and obviously there's known depth for the next at least three weeks with Mike Davis. That's interesting. But it's you wouldn't the, have put Mike Davis in your lineup. I would not have put oh, Mike okay. Davis in my lineup. Yeah, that changes your bid. I mean, that's why it's everyone wants to know how much fab do I spend, mm -hmm. and they want a number. And the number is contextual. Yeah, I had. Are Ken you going to play him a lot? Yeah, I had Kenyon Drake and James Conner uh, after Christian McCaffrey, so I didn't feel like I had to get Mike. Davis. There you go. Okay, very interesting. Uh, the other news did I mention it? Kenny Kenny Galladay is back at practice, so oh, oh, you have uh, you have the opportunity it's there. So smooth. Oh, you're saying try and get the trade in before the Kenny G. before the news really breaks out. I'm not saying nothing, Mike. So smooth. Just soaking it in. Um, okay. So that that's the breaking news I have. Some some news is broken during the show mm -hmm. today. So let's go ahead and hit Thursday night. Thursday night breakdown. The battle of the moxie. Oh, is that? <laughs> I mean, Minshew yes. versus Fitz Magic. Are yes. you kidding me? This is absolutely well, must-watch television. It's beard versus mustache. It too. is. I can't wait for this game. If you told me, like, look at the schedule, Jaguars, Dolphins, yuck. I can't wait to watch the real football. Oh, man. Did you see the quote from Gardner Minshew about Ryan Fitzpatrick? No. Oh, oh I'm so happy so that Mike good. hasn't no. heard this. What? Uh, apparently, Ryan yes. Fitzpatrick kind of uh, – 
playfully uh, attacked Minshew saying beards are better than oh, mustaches. Oh, facial hair dominance. And so Minshew said, you know, he's got to respect his elders, especially when they're way, way elder. <laughs> 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 so, so he deferred, yes. but then... Uh, oh, that is great. Gave him the side eye too. So uh, the Dolphins take on the Jacksonville Jaguars, as, as we've said. Jags are two and a half point favorites at home. It's a 48 point over under. Minshew is my start of the week. So this one will be fun. Beard versus mustache. So um, <laughs> Fitzpatrick said guys that grow mustaches have patchy sides. <laughs> Look, he, he may not be wrong. Oh, that's great. That is great. Uh, but Minshew, I like him in this game. Fitzpatrick, he had 28 fantasy points last week. They were a player or two away from beating Buffalo. I don't think people maybe realize that with how uh, prolific – Josh Allen's been in the the Bills and how they've played, but this game was actually very, very close. Um, Jacksonville, their defense is struggling to put pressure on the quarterback. They're dead last in adjusted sack rate. Ritz, Fitzpatrick will have a chance to throw the football. A couple of surprise running backs that maybe you didn't even know their names before the season began. James Robinson, Miles Gaskin in this game. Uh, Robinson been getting 16 carries in each of the first two games. I acquired him in a dynasty league, needing some depth, feeling like he's going to have a sustainable role rest of season in Jacksonville. But who do you start at the running back position in Miami? Because we thought it'd be Jordan Howard and Matt Breida, but here's Miles Gaskin. It it is Miles Gaskin. If if you're forced to start a Miami Dolphin running back, number one, I am so sorry. Uh, number two, it's it's Miles Gaskin. The the other two guys are getting outworked. Jordan Howard, what was his? His line was like 3 2 1 last 17 week. 17 total snaps. We it, call that a blast off. Yeah, right? it wasn't that. I mean, but it was, uh, it was 5 4. Where's the one. Jordan Howard truthers now? Yeah, I, I, I can't believe what has happened to Jordan Howard. Week one, eight attempts for seven yards. Week two, five attempts for four yards. Now, granted, he's he seems to be getting exclusive work. <laughs> at the goal line, so he's only got one yard to go. Like the, the the yards per carry argument when you're like, well, what about all the goal line carries? It actually holds water for Jordan Howard. That's the only carries that he is seeing. But it He would is, like to average one. It is very right. – Because that means he's successful. It is very bizarre what has happened with – Jordan Howard was the free agent they picked up. They traded for Matt Burita, and they're like, ah, you know what? Seventh round, Miles Gaskin. That's the guy we need running our offense – 28 routes run from the running back position for Miles Gaskin. I don't have the target number in front of me, but it was a lot. Oh, seven. Seven targets, six catches in this past week. Is he a flex? He is a – no. He is absolutely a borderline flex. He's he was, a borderline flex. He's a he's – a, he's a, But in this game specifically, where, Jason, do you know Jacksonville's given up 26 fantasy points to opposing running backs. Here are Miles Gaskin's fantasy finishes the first two weeks. RB35 and RB26. That is an absolute fringe flex play. It's desperate. Yeah, I mean, you you can... It's better than Chris Thompson. Well, I I said this to to Andy yesterday in the studio. I said he's, he's a top 30 back, but I'm not sure that that matters. Like, do you really want to flex a guy who finishes at 26 on the week? That's that's not what you're ever hoping for. It, it's enough to where you're not embarrassed, but you're probably going to lose. <laughs> and that, so it doesn't matter. It's tough in the streets, man. You got you got a lot of injuries that you people do. are dealing with. You do have a lot of injuries. I mean, you'd play him over Chris Thompson. Yes, and, you and would. I, who's sadder, the Jordan Howard drafter or the Chris Thompson drafter right now? Thompson. Thompson went much higher. Thompson had huge expectations, especially from me personally. I will say this. James Robinson's snap percentage went down last week, although the game script in this one lends itself towards James Robinson being pretty involved. So I think Robinson's an okay starter. We have him at RB19 on the week, and I think he'll be just fine. He's looked good. Yeah, the the thing that I like about James Robinson is that he's passed the eye test. When we're watching these games, we're like, oh, man, that's a strong run. Oh, man, what a broken tackle. He just – he actually, he's not in the offense that you want. This isn't a prolific uh, team that's going to be ever favored by nine points at home and just a smash play. But I trust James Robinson based on the carries he's getting 
and the film that I've watched, saying he's not a bad running back. I'm going to bring up a bonus edition of Trending or Ending right now, and it's DJ Chark. DJ Chark, through mm. two weeks, mm. he was the wide receiver 34. He was the wide receiver 35. He's on the field 80% of the time. His targets in those two games, three and four. Now, he's caught every one of them. But trending or ending DJ Chark because people are panicking. I've seen it on Twitter. Uh, they're a little worried. I mean, you didn't think you were getting a, a th our uh, wide receiver 35 the same way we didn't think that with Cooper Cup. No, the I would I will say with a very shaky voice ending. I, it, I I'm sometimes so in fantasy football. I was thinking about this on the drive in of when you are you know trading low for a player or there's kind of the two buckets that I put things into. It's number one, just talent. You know, sometimes you you know a player is very good, like Allen Robinson. Terry McLaurin. Like the Allen Robinson, uh, that's ending. He's getting way too much volume, and he's too great. DJ Chark is you're just buying on talent alone because the peripheral numbers, the 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 opportunities he he is receiving right now are not enough. It's it's not enough. So I'm... I I would try to get him, but it's it's super sketchy right now for DJ Chark. Unfortunately, are you worried about him this week? He's got the injury, but we yeah. expect him to play. And if he plays, it's a great situation. The Dolphins are giving up 39 fantasy points a week right now to I'm, wide receivers. I'm still playing him, which is crazy with their cornerbacks. They paid all that money for Byron Jones. Well, he hasn't played, has he? Didn't he miss a week? No, he was he was in, but he got knocked out of last okay. week at some point. And he's probably going to miss this week. That's a great question. I'm sorry. I think I he might miss this week. But um, I I uh, surprisingly I'm I'm holding I'm holding with he, DJ Chark. I'm a hold. He is considered doubtful. Byron Jones. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm holding DJ yes, Chark. Yes, I'm a hold. Chark. This could be the breakout week. It really could. And then on the other side of the ball, Devontae Parker is questionable. Limited it on Tuesday. I think he'll play too. I like I like Parker. I have not liked him through the first two weeks with the hamstring injuries, the re-aggravation, but he was able to play through it successfully last week, and now another week, I, I think this is where he gets back on track and has a breakout game. I, I, I would be happy to start Devontae Parker and thrilled to play Mike Gesicki. These, these are the two uh, receiving weapons I want in this game, and I think both will have a, a, a big game. I, you know, I, I know that there's always the chance to – uh, have that major disappointment, but I I think this is an over game. I think that these two quarterbacks will get it done, and they're, they're going to start just going back and forth by the end of the game, scoring. And I, I I would like pieces of that on a Thursday night where should the opposite happen, I, I've got that extra time for knowledge of how my team started. I'll give you a little peek into tomorrow. Tomorrow is starts of the week. And I took my quarterback. I went. I went a little hybrid because it's it's a start, but it's just another streaming option because I don't think we gave him the love that he deserved on Tuesday. It's Ryan Fitzpatrick. He Ryan Fitzpatrick is my start of the week at the quarterback position. All right, I have to react to something that took place in our dynasty league. Now I thought, Mike, I thought that I was I was going to acquire. You thought wrong. Drew Sample for fifty dollars <laughs> worth of dynasty fab. And here's Mike swooping in with $64. You know who's on the block? Drew oh, Drew uh, Sample. I just wanted some, <laughs> some depth. Yeah, because I, I, we would be talking about C.J. Uzama this week had we he not been hurt. Burrow seems to like the tight end position. <clears throat> but does. Sample looks even better for a long-term view because of the draft capital second-round yeah, pick. You talking about second-round pick, Drew Sample? Who's, now, who's available in our Dynasty League? Tying it back into this game. <laughs> I picked up Isaiah Ford in the Dynasty League because okay, Isaiah, that's Ford, a great pick Isaiah Ford has been impressive. Um, last week was the wide receiver, 28. Miami Dolphins wide receiver. That's right. Uh, seven uh, receptions, 76 yards, nine targets last week. Preston Williams had some drop skis in that game. Isaiah Ford is emerging a little bit. So, again, it's a very deep ad in a Dynasty League, but he is a spot start if you need if you're in an emergency this week. I'd say possibly a spot start. He's for me is just a storyline of I, you know I like to be in the games. What am I watching for? I'm, I don't really have any skin in the game on Isaiah Ford, but I'm watching. I want to see if this is 
a trend or not. He was a Matt Harmon favorite coming out of yeah, the, the dra- college ranks. Draft Twitter really liked Isaiah Ford, and then he plummeted, unfortunately. A reminder, take your Thursday night players out of the flex position. Put them in your main uh, running back or wide receiver spot so you have flexibility later. Let me ask you this, Andy. Isaiah, would you – you're in deep – you're in a deep league. Yeah. You got to have a spot start. You were ravaged by injuries. You're freaking Rav- out. I've been ravaged. Ra- this is ravaged. Yeah. Ravaged. Are you playing? <laughs> are you going to go with Isaiah Ford, or would you go with Keelan Cole? I'd go Keelan Cole. Yeah, yeah. Keelan Cole's leading the team in targets right now. Keelan Cole is one of the players that, when I watch him play football, I'm always like, it's like Robert Woods in Buffalo. I go, man, I think Keelan Cole's good, and then he just dances around the depth chart like people. It's so weird. And here he is again, relevant. Years ago. We watched, and both of us loved Keelan Cole, and we're like, man, he's going to be a thing. We grabbed him at Dynasty, and then he just disappeared for a while. Yeah. He's back. Yeah, LaVisca Chenault or Keelan Cole in this game? I think I'd play Cole. Okay. i got to adjust my rankings. All right. Anything else you guys want to add? Any other breaking news, Brooks? You got anything special for us? Nothing. Man. (laughs) That's great. That means there was no injuries in the last 20 minutes. All right, we have starts of the week on tomorrow's show. We'll get into the matchups for week three. And we've got football again tomorrow, guys. Oh, it's excellent. What a world. Drew Sample what a, Sniper. What a time to be alive. Take care. G- goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Foot Clan, do not forget about today's sponsor, Simply Safe. They are keeping you safe. Simply. You can set it up yourself in about under an hour. No tech is required. No contract. Starting at about $15 a month. Try Simply Safe today at simplysafe.com slash footballers. Free shipping, 60-day risk-free trial. There's nothing to lose. Simplysafe.com slash footballers.